It's truly a pleasure here to be and a privilege to be standing uh, on this stage with you and, and everybody else today. And I could not be more proud of the stories that we're about to share with all of you. Because these are stories about this convergence, this convergence of health and technology to empower human lives. And they come from all around the world and they're powered by data, cutting edge science, technological innovation, but they're rooted in one single concept, human powered health. Human dignity, it pumps no blood, thinks no thoughts, moves no muscles. It's hard to measure on a graph. Breakthroughs in human dignity rarely make the news. Yet we pursue it relentlessly because it's vital to every human being and profoundly linked to our health. We are all human beings, all of us in this room, all of us watching online. And we all deserve to walk through this life with our heads held high. But illness has the power to disrupt our dignity, to steal from our lives. We see a future where we unlock good health, giving us the power to move forward in control of our lives, to be the people we were born to be, to realize our individual potential. We are in the business of asking and answering seemingly impossible questions. What if I could find out my son or daughter had a concussion right after they were pulled from the game? What if I could know I wasn't infectious before I gathered with my family? What if I could know I was at a greater risk for an impending heart attack? These are some of the what ifs we've already solved, but there are more. What if we could end malnutrition? What if we could stop a pandemic before it starts? What if everyone had access to affordable care, even in the farthest reaches of the world? Our path is to seek out even the questions that have yet to be asked. Every one of us deserves to live a life unencumbered by disease, to cross a room unassisted, to know our heartbeats are stable and strong to take hold of our lives with steady hands. Human dignity demands it. At this moment in time, technology is changing faster than ever before. People are living longer than ever before. And we are using technology to ensure that those longer lives are lived to the fullest. This is human powered health. And it's all about unlocking the possibility of you. Human-powered health, I don't know about you, but that's definitely a future that I, that I feel inspired to be part of. And thanks to Lawrence Fishburne, the forever Morpheus here for helping set the context for what we're gonna share with you today. You know, in my native Brazil, we have a very special tradition to ring in the new year. Uh, we spend the evening close to the water, we dress in white, and we wish each other many things. We wish each other love, success, but above all, we wish health. Because we recognize that the new year will likely bring a lot of new challenges, but with health, we know that we can deal with them. And Abbott's been wishing good health to the world for more than 130 years and helping make it a reality. And I'm here today to share that wish with all of you and to show you the better future that we're helping make possible. In our lifetimes, we've witnessed incredible advancements in both health and technology. In fact, tech has always fueled new advances in healthcare, new medicines, critical vaccines, new ways to screen and diagnose, a rapid expansion of our understanding of disease, the use of data and AI to better predict illness and better target treatment. Consider just the progress we've made. It's just truly astonishing to realize how far we've come in such a short period of time. But what inspires me the most is how far we can still go. By linking health with new consumer-focused technologies to deliver on this promise of human-powered health. And this is exactly why Abbott wanted to be here at CES to share our vision. Health tech is at an inflection point. And COVID-19 has powerfully under underscored the importance of health, and the growing value of the technologies that protect and advance it. We're creating a future that will bring you 
and your loved ones care that's more personal and more precise. The kind of future that gives you more convenience and control and that extends access to care for more people than ever, than ever before and to take human capabilities to entirely new levels. A future where people can proactively manage their health, detect disease earlier, and even prevent it from happening. This convergence of health and technology has the power to digitize, decentralize, and democratize healthcare, to create a shared language between you and your doctor and put more control of your health in your hands. It's a future that holds incredible promise and opportunity. And with the right tools, we can give everyone their best chance to live a fuller, healthier life. You know, for those that are learning about Abbott for the first time, we've been part of every stage of the advancement of human health over the past 130 years. We were among the pioneers that created modern healthcare, the science of medicine, vitamins and aesthetics, IV solutions, scientifically based nutrition, cardiovascular devices, glucose monitoring for diabetes, and yes, modern diagnostics, including the first ever test for HIV. And it was this track record that made me want to join this company 25 years ago. And it's what makes me confident that we can deliver on our vision for the future. And that vision, by the way, includes Abbott helping one in every three people on this planet by the year 2030. And to do that, we're going to continue to propel science and technology into the future. At-home tests for COVID-19, rapid tests for concussions, personalized medical nutrition based on your unique microbiome, implantable devices, bio-wearable sensors. But what we want to share with you today are not just products, they're stories. Stories of hope, triumph, and achievement in the face of incredible odds. Stories that illustrate Abbott's vision for a better, healthier future. Stories of human-powered health, unlocking the possibility of you. You know that today, one in every 10 Americans has type 2 diabetes. Six in every 10 adults have some sort of chronic disease. One in every two Americans has a heart disease, and they account, heart disease accounts for about a third of all deaths globally. These diseases are some of the world's greatest challenges. And you get a sense of how prevalent they are by your wristbands or by your neighbors, but stopping these threats will be no small feat. But sometimes, our healthcare systems can be a little bit intimidating. And the worsening of health disparities is alarming. And we're working tirelessly to break down some of those challenges so all of us can speak a common language with our doctors and have a better understanding of our health. Take diabetes, for example. We're helping empower people who have it with a sensing technology that gives them easy access to data so they can make real-time decisions. The Freestyle Libre technology gives consumers more data and more insights conveniently and in a way that's easily understood. Glucose measured every minute with a small bio-wearable sensor. It's like wearing a lab that's so small and discreet that you forget that it's there. And the technology called continuous glucose monitoring automatically tracks your glucose levels day and night using a small sensor that's worn on the back of your upper arm. And with a quick look at your phone, you have your own unique personal glucose information to better manage your diabetes. Checking your glucose is as easy as checking the weather. And we designed Freestyle Libre systems to be accessible and affordable right from the start. Fisher Price friendly, at no more than a latte a day, we were working purposefully to drive down the cost at every step of the product's development, from R&D, supply chain, manufacturing, distribution. And today, it's the most affordable glucose monitor and the most widely used around the globe. Remember that music you heard when you were walking in here? That, that was Austin James and the Nomads. And Austin and his bandmate Spencer are part of the Freestyle Libre family. And this technology is helping them focus on their music 
instead of their diabetes, which is definitely something that we love to hear. But for more on how Freestyle Libre systems are helping people with diabetes, it's my pleasure to welcome actress, comedian, author, and television personality, Sherry Shepard. Hey! <laughs> it's all yours, Sherry. Robert, this feels like when I was on Dancing with the Stars. I feel like we got to do a salsa. Okay, there we go. <laughs> like over here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Robert. <sighs> right before I began co-hosting The View, I got a diagnosis that probably saved my life. The doctors told me that I had type 2 diabetes. Now, my family, they had a long history of diabetes. My mom died from diabetic complications. My sister has it, so does my uncle. And in the African-American community, diabetes is commonly referred to by the cute name called the sugar. But using this term, it kept me from being accountable for what I was putting in my body. Now, I knew I was pre-diabetic, but I didn't really know what that meant. I didn't realize how serious it was. I was living such an unhealthy lifestyle. I was eating junk food. I wasn't exercising, I was working all the time. And when I was diagnosed, my glucose levels were in the three to 400 range, which is about three times higher than what's healthy. I was stunned. Well, I really can't say I was stunned, I was scared. I was so scared of my diagnosis that I immediately sought comfort where I always had, which was in food. I immediately had a big bowl of pasta with pesto and chicken. Then I went to a restaurant and I wolfed down all you can eat pancakes dripping with strawberry and maple syrup, followed by tons of bacon. And I was doing what I had done my entire life. I was eating foods that were bad for me and trying to drown out the voices telling me to stop. I was still hiding from what I knew to be true, that I was slowly killing myself with unhealthy choices. Then I have to tell you, one day, my son said something to me that changed my life. My son Jeffrey said, Mommy, if you die, who's going to be my bodyguard? That shook me to my core. And right there in front of me was all of the why that I needed to get on the path towards a healthier lifestyle, which was easier said than done because figuring out your glucose levels it was just a hassle. And I learned where my levels were at that moment. Now, I didn't learn how they tracked over time or where they might be in the future. I tried to give up all kinds of foods, but that just made my glucose levels spike up and down. I was driven to change, but I just was lost on which direction I should go. And then I found Freestyle Libre. This little miracle changed my life. It didn't hurt, it didn't hurt. I don't need the routine finger pricks anymore. It gives me my readings right on my phone. It gives me my glucose information that is unique to my body so I can make healthier choices. And I know that is accurate and it even holds me accountable. I got this little saying that makes me think twice to make sure that I am making a healthy decision. And it is, Libre don't lie. <laughs> you know, Sherry, I, I love that because it doesn't lie. Um, but you mentioned uh, at the beginning here when you started your journey that you kind of felt a little bit lost. So is there anything that you could share uh, with anybody that's starting this journey, this diabetes journey, uh, that you, you could impart some of that knowledge that you've acquired? Absolutely, Robert. I hope that people can move past the shame and the guilt phase faster than I did. Because at first I had a hard time talking about it because I didn't feel educated about diabetes. I felt like I was running from it. And the more shame that I felt, the more I tried to just figure things out on my own. And that's a really hard path to travel. So now my eyes are wide open about what foods I truly need. And this can be really confusing. You never know which sources to trust. But once I started getting the insights that are unique to me, I've become so passionate to learn more about healthy eating and living and having a better understanding about how certain foods and activities are affecting my body. 
So even at night, the Freestyle Libre, what I like about it, it alerts me that my glucose levels are low, wakes me right up, and it takes out all the guesswork. So I think my favorite part is that it's helping me break this multi-generational diabetes history in my family. And my son, Jeffrey, he likes to take my readings. He's learning about food and nutrition and health, the things that I never learned until after I was a diabetic. So this journey, it hasn't been easy. But knowing that Jeffrey has a better chance at living a healthy lifestyle is a huge silver lining for me. I bet it is. I bet it is. Well, listen, thank you so much for, for sharing such a personal story here. And I just think it's so cool that you're using your platform to be able to talk about diabetes and help people live you know, better lives through, through what you've experienced. So thank you for doing that and thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. You know, as, uh, as Sherry experience shows, precise and personalized medical devices can take the guesswork out of preventative care and disease management. These devices, they're gonna be intuitive and they're untethered and they'll support you wherever you go. And they're gonna help people like those living with heart failure live on their own terms. Here's a story of one person whose life changed in a blink of an eye and how he kept pushing forward against all odds. If you found out you had six months to live, what would you do? Every heart has a story. This is Tyrone's. It happened on closing time. And my wife had called me and asked me to bring some detergent home. So I walked in back of the store. But when I got to the end of the aisle, I had a nine millimeter put up to my head. And you know, when they put the gun to my head and told me to open the safe up, it just triggered something to my heart. And like I said, the muscles just just stop. It just felt like my heart just just dropped out right then. Um, that's when my family doctor found out my muscles to my heart had started to stop working. First thing I thought about was my kids. You know, what's gonna happen to them? When they first told me that he was sick, I was kind of scared. Like my dad, I haven't even been married yet. I haven't, he won't get to walk me down the aisle. I might miss out on all the father-daughter things that we haven't got to do yet. When they diagnosed me with congested heart failure, actually one of the doctors came in and told me in 2012 that I had six months to live. Tyrone's heart became too weak to pump blood to the rest of his body. His heart was working at a fraction of what it should. He couldn't walk to the nearest wall to support himself. He was short-winded all the time. But what if I told you this wasn't the end of Tyrone's story? That there's a future of possibilities waiting for him. While Tyrone waited for a new heart, Abbott and his healthcare providers equipped him with a suite of implants that kept his heart going. The HeartMate 3 heart pump circulated the blood through his body, performing the heart's job for it. And his CardioMEMS heart failure system monitors his heart's function wherever he goes, even to this day. Tyrone's implants kept him going until he was the recipient of a new heart in 2021. Today, he's unlocking new possibilities and living a fuller life. When I got introduced to the habit, that was the best thing in my life because I had a second chance in life. I'm still standing here, I'm still having fun, I'm still bowling, I'm still fishing, I'm still barbecuing, I'm still doing whatever I want to do. It's like I'm living a dream. You know, I was helped, I was showed the way. So now I'm showing other patients the way. You know, stories like Tyrone's are why we do the work we do at Abbott. We're fighting for Tyrone and for everyone who might find themselves in a similar position, fighting to help them live life with the dignity that every human deserves. And for years, Abbott devices kept Tyrone alive. In fact, one of these devices called CardioMems 
and it's a tiny pressure sensor implanted in the pulmonary artery, still has his back, literally. Every night, Tyrone lies on a special pillow that sends data from blood flow pressure and heart rate from his cardiomem's device to his doctors and alerts them if there's, there's a problem. But hey, don't take my word for it. Let's hear it straight from him. Please welcome to the stage, Tyrone Morris. Listen, I know your story. Uh, we've known each other for a couple of years already, and your story is so incredible. And last year, I think it was January 13th, you got a new heart. And off script, like amazing, a new heart, like wow. <laughs> tell me and tell everybody, like, how does it feel, like, after all of that, to have, have this new heart, this new second chance? Well, it feels amazing. I never thought that I would be in this situation in my life. First, I would like to thank Abbott and all the engineers for what they have done for me. They have saved my life. You know, um, you, you have two devices right now, a pacemaker and cardiomems. You had a third one, which was the HeartMate, that kind of kept you going. Um, explain to people what it's like to have all of these implanted devices in you and kind of living with them. How was it? It changed my life. I had three of Abbott device implanted in my chest. Um, it saved me. I was still able to barbecue, fish, play with my grandkids, play basketball, do whatever I like in life. It kept me alive to be on the stage at this point. That's great. Uh, you know, one of the things that I love about your story is that, you know, you got such a big heart and, and now you're paying it forward. Um, so you actually have a support group that you lead to help other people that are going through a similar situation with their cardiac care. So why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about that also? Well, I learned a lot about the heart pump, the heart made three. So I'm taking the knowledge that I learned and sharing it with others. I think that's the best way for me to give back. Yeah, that's great. Well, listen, I, I am so happy to see you here on stage. I'm so happy that you came and, and, and shared your story. Happy New Year to you, and, and, and you got a special, a, a special anniversary every year now in January. Happy anniversary, too. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, we never at Abbott take for granted the importance of the work we do for people every single day. I often tell my team that we're the lucky ones because it's stories like Tyrone's that really get it, gets us out of bed every morning and they inspire us to keep creating these new life-changing technologies. And as these technologies become more common and the next generations become even smaller, they'll be less intrusive, they'll be more mobile uh, and even more connected. And for more on this connected care experience, please welcome Dr. Leslie Saxon. Dr. Saxon is a professor of medicine at the University of Southern California, and she's an interventional cardiologist. Um, but the cool part of it is that she runs USC's Body Computing Center, uh, where she studies implantable devices and, and other wearables. And we are super proud to have been partnered with Dr. Saxon for the last 20 years. So Dr. Saxon, thank you for being here. Thank you, Robert. And I'm very proud to work with you. You know, I have always believed that our health is the most important story that we have to tell. And I'm sure I share with you the Tyrone story inspires all of us, really shows us how healthcare technologies can make healthcare more, not less personal. Health technologies have the power to gather personalized data with the promise of offering everyone on earth, and I do believe that, the power to understand and manage their health in real time. Think about this, this could make us all healthier stave off disease, obtain better health care outcomes, even for those battling with the most serious life-threatening conditions, people like Tyrone. At USC, our research was the first to show that an implantable defibrillator treated to treat patients with heart failure, when, when connected to the internet, improved longevity in people living with heart failure, improved survival. This continuous data, and it's key that it's continuous, provides the earliest warning of a serious event that can then be treated or corrected, mitigated before it happens.
That means that people can go on living their lives with ease and increased comfort because they have these early warning systems looking out for them. This also means that healthcare providers like myself, and this is really important, can focus their time more efficiently on people who actually need their support and scale and offer their services to people anywhere in the world. At the Center for Body Computing, we don't call this healthcare, it's bigger. We call it life care, because life care happens all the time. It provides individualized insights, it engages you, importantly, it informs you, and it brings the expertise of medical professionals to you when you need them. And this occurs whether you're healthy or sick. And that's exactly what I'm doing every day in my research and in my work with Abbott. Our mission is to optimize health, meaning helping us finally realize the entirety of the human potential. Finding that potential cannot only occur in clinics or healthcare facilities or training facilities. It needs to occur on demand anywhere, anytime. So implantable and wearable technology combined with the right software, meaning the right experience, allows for two really important things. More data to be more continuously collected, and we can finally learn those deeper, more personalized insights into health, into disease, and into the transition from health to disease. Our research is focused on using technology, uh, te these connected technologies, to provide life care. For example, we're researching providing life care to military personnel, so they have a better chance of surviving these prolonged conflicts within their minds, within their bodies, and within their families. That's life care at an extreme end, but it applies to everyday people. It applies to senior citizens. Life care can connect them to things like free ride sharing, so they can go where they need, so they can preserve their independence, even if they're living with chronic disease. For me, this is all about enhancing the human, the individual. So these technologies we're using are optimizing, realizing the human potential to deliver insights so that all human beings can be more autonomous, more in control, and be able to make those life decisions in a healthier, more informed way. So the idea is to give all of us the ability to live our most important story, the story of our health. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. Thank you. And it's very exciting to help make that vision into a reality. And this is the future of healthcare. It extends beyond the hospital walls and gives you the power to live your life and optimize your care. For people, who live with movement disorders, such as Parkinson's disease. Managing their treatment has been a huge challenge. An Abbott therapy called neuromodulation delivers low-intensity electrical impulses to the nerve structures, helping to suppress the tremors. But the therapy sometimes needs to be adjusted to changes in the person's condition. And in the past, this meant having to take consuming trips to talk to your doctor and make those personalized adjustments. Not easy for someone that's got a movement disorder. But what if, when your treatment needs adjustment, your doctor could optimize your implants, but do it remotely to deliver the right doses of electrical therapy to you wherever you are? Abbott's Neurosphere Virtual Clinic makes that happen today. So it's an honor to welcome neurologist Dr. Fiona Gupta, who's one of the earliest adopters of the Neurosphere Virtual Clinic and someone who's conducted more than 500 sessions for patients around the US. Dr. Gupta is the director of Movement Disorders Outreach Program at Mount Sinai, a health system in New York. Dr. Gupta, thanks Thank for coming. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. I continue to marvel at how much more we can do to help people today than even when I started practicing medicine 15 years ago. I know you already explained what neuromodulation is, but the way I explain it to my patients is this. Neuromodulation uses weak pulses of electricity to modulate brain function to help restore movement in the body. And we can get better results for patients with the Neurosphere Virtual Clinic. It is truly a first-of-its-kind technology in the U.S. Our virtual clinics provide the convenience and flexibility of remote care, so physicians can not only see their patients, but optimize treatments remotely. Whether you are two blocks or 200 miles away from your physician, 
It helps people strengthen their relationship with their doctor by extending care beyond clinic walls. Remotely, your doctor can make sure you're getting the best therapy possible and help you live more in the moment, with the comfort of knowing relief is readily available. This is huge for people living with movement disorders. To help you better understand the impact that Neurosphere can have on people with movement disorders, I would like to introduce you to one of my patients. His name is Dr. Randolph Todd, and he is actually a dentist. Via the Abbott Remote Care System virtual clinic, I'm actually going to do a demonstration where I'll shut the device off, I'll shut the simulation off, and let's just see what the tremor looks like. So simulation is on, tremor looks quite well controlled, and um, just bring your arm out for me. But we turn it off, good, and you can rest it down on your lap. Great, nice and still. So I'll go ahead and shut it off. So it is off right now. Looks that the tremor recurred quite a bit, yeah? No, quite severe. Can we have you reach out your arm? Yeah, okay. Found, and then put your arm down, that's great. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on. It will ramp up slowly. So stimulation is going back on. And again, it's ramping up slowly. And voila, looks like tremor stopped. Let's have you bring your arm out again. To... That's wonderful. And you can put your arm down. Thank you. Randy's story shows how seamlessly this technology can be adjusted. And this is kind of mind-boggling, but these therapies have more than 50,000 settings that can be physician-adjusted and fine-tuned to make it truly personalized for people like Randy. With the Neurosphere Virtual Clinic, we can create a path to just right for patients, no matter where they live. As long as they have Wi-Fi or cellular access, reducing the need for multiple in-person office visits, which can be difficult, not just for the patients, but for their families and caregivers as well. This enables the doctor and patient to walk together to virtually any room in the patient's house. What I mean by that is they can show me how they are playing the piano, how they interact with their pets, and how they navigate their kitchens. This gives me the opportunity to personalize their deep brain stimulation and help them continue to do the things they love to do. This was never possible before. It's been a life changer for my patients and their loved ones. And remember, this is just a glimpse of what the future holds for other conditions as well. And I want to close with something that I remember from medical school. If you lose hope, all is lost. Neuromodulation and the Neurosphere Virtual Clinic is a chance for us to give hope back. Thanks, Fiona. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for your work. Pleasure. Thank you. Better connectivity and remote monitoring will improve access to care for so many people throughout the globe. But what about those moments of uncertainty that we all had to confront with over the past couple of years? The way to eliminate uncertainty in healthcare is with testing. 70% of all medical decisions are a result of a diagnostic test. Now you can get that information more easily, more quickly, and in more places than ever before. It's about decentralization, putting the right test, the right place at the right time. For instance, you take a hard fall, there's a possibility of a traumatic brain injury or TBI or concussion. Do I go to the hospital? Do I need to get a CT scan? Am I, am I overreacting? What's needed here is a rapid test that can give you either peace of mind or an action plan. And that's exactly what our iStat TBI test does. It's the first objective blood test for biomarkers of brain injury on a portable device with results ready in just, you know, 15 minutes. Then you'll know if you really need to do additional care or even more testing. Or say it's the middle of the night 
and your child wakes up with a cough, fever. Is it the common cold, the flu, COVID? Now imagine being able to test that sick child at home right now and quickly make an informed choice about what to do next. And that is gonna be the future of testing. These simple tests will become more widely available for people to do at home. They're gonna to talk to our phones, and they're gonna communicate with our doctors. The future of decentralized and democratized testing will enable us to have the right test at the right place at the right time and will give everyone actionable next steps. An example of this is our Binax test, rapid test for COVID. And along with its complementary app, Navica, people have results in 15 minutes and they can get proof of their results right there on their mobile device. We're manufacturing more than 70 million Binax tests this month, so along with vaccines, and other measures, people can get the answers they need to safely gather again, get back to work, school, and travel. Case in point, every five minutes, about 600 planes are up in the air. And being able, again, to have the confidence and safe travel is now possible through our partnership with United Airlines and EMED. To hear more about this, please welcome to the stage Aaron McMillan, who's the Managing Director of Hospitality and Planning at United Airlines and responsible for customer COVID testing, and Dr. Patrice Harris, who's the CEO of EMED, a health tech company, and the former president of the American Medical Association. Dr. Harris. Thank you, Robert. Our story is about harnessing the power of medical testing to continue to make international travel available. When the pandemic first hit, there was fear and confusion, leaving many of us afraid to leave our homes, let alone travel. That's why United took quick and decisive action, establishing a leadership position in the industry. Through, through what we call our Clean Plus program, we partnered with the Cleveland Clinic and Clorox to achieve the highest standards of cleanliness and safety and made every step of air travel safer. We consider United the flagship carrier of the U.S., flying to more international destinations around the globe than any other U.S. carrier. But as international travel restrictions were put in place, limiting our customers' ability to travel, we were forced to scale back our capacity. We had to find a way to help our customers return to flying because air travel plays such an essential role in all our lives. We knew testing was the answer. We even created an internal mantra of testing, 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 to getting our customers back in the air. To put that mantra into action, we worked with Abbott and EMED to form a first-of-its-kind partnership. Here's why that was important. We wanted our customers to have ready access to testing. Instead of leaving our customers to find testing on their own, we brought testing to them. We did that through United's Travel Ready Center on united.com and the United app, so customers can enjoy their international trip to the fullest and not spend time worrying about finding a testing location and getting the right test to meet U.S. reentry requirements. In the Travel Ready Center, there's a direct link to order an Abbott by Next Now test, and you can't miss it. Thanks to this partnership, customers can order a test to pack in their carry-on, then take the test right from their hotel room via telehealth to easily be cleared to re-enter the U.S. directly through our Travel Ready Center. Customers have told us how this has given them such peace of mind when they need to re-enter the U.S. In fact, we were the first airline to help you with meeting CDC requirements by making the first FDA-authorized, virtually guided, at-home COVID test available for travelers returning to the U.S. We know this partnership is just the beginning for empowering people with technology so that we can travel safely and confidently as we enter this new year. Thanks, Aaron. You know, uh, Dr. Harris, I travel a lot internationally, and uh, I can only tell you how empowering the EMED system was uh, for so many people traveling internationally. And maybe for those that don't know a lot about it, why don't you tell a little bit about it and, and where do you see the technology going? Well, thank you, Robert. EMED is proud to have partnered with Abbott and United in harnessing the power of innovation and technology to make the international travel experience safe and worry-free. Through the EMED digital point of care platform, we enabled an on-demand rapid testing process using EMED proctors who guide you through the testing experience with actionable, verified results in minutes sent via an EMED Labs report or on Abbott's Navica app. 
You can take this test in the comfort of your home, office, hotel, or wherever you are, anywhere in the world. But eMed didn't stop with travel. As a doctor, I've often thought about the promise of healthcare enabled by technology that centers the person and the family, giving everyone the tools they need for equitable opportunities to live healthier lives. And that led me to co-found eMed, the first digital point of care company. In partnership with Abbott, we have successfully brought a revolutionary tech platform to the market. With eMed's telehealth proctors and lab services, we have enabled tens of millions of COVID-19 rapid home tests to people all over America. eMed technology works with you to verify your identity, guides you through taking the tests, validate and record the results on our cloud-based service and issue a lab report so you can take action. Test to know, so you can learn whether or not you have COVID. Test to go, so people can get on a plane, safely attend work, and send your children back to school. But eMed focuses not only on rapid diagnosis, but also on quick access to therapeutics tests to treat. With most infectious diseases, rapid treatment is key to rapid recovery, staying out of the hospital and limiting the spread of infection. eMed is enabling this approach for illnesses such as flu, strep, UTI, and of course, COVID-19. We believe that when you don't feel well, you should be able to take a test at home receive verified and validated results, and get rapid access to the right treatment, ASAP. At eMed, we are confident about the future of digital point of care and helping everyone live healthier lives. And Robert and Aaron, we truly appreciate this partnership with Abbott and United in helping this country emerge from the pandemic and to leverage technology to democratize healthcare in the years to come. Thank you, and back to you, Robert. You know, thank you, Dr. Harris and, and Aaron. Uh, thank you for your partnership and the vision uh, in making testing and traveling a little bit easier on all of us. So thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. But we're not content sitting back and just playing defense against these viruses. We're gonna go on offense. At Abbott, there's a team of virus hunters. Pretty cool job. Working behind the scenes now to protect you. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Mary Rogers to the stage. Dr. Rogers is an infectious disease expert, and we're so proud to have her uh, on the Abbott team. Uh, Dr. Rogers and her team have actually been at the forefront of uh, COVID-19 and helping us develop all these diagnostic tests so that people have, uh, you know, can rely on them and, 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 and live kind of healthier, safer, safer lives. So Dr. Rogers, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Our goal is to make sure that we're all better prepared for the next virus. That's why we've partnered with top scientists from around the world in the past year to build a viral defense network. It's called the Abbott Pandemic Defense Coalition, a network spanning the globe from Brazil to Senegal to Thailand. Together, we're keeping a watchful eye on today's viruses because we know that the viruses never stop, but neither do we. So we're doing more than just watching. Here's how the coalition works. Let's say a doctor has a patient who's ill and has tested negative for all the usual suspects. The coalition is alerted, and that's when we go to work to identify what that pathogen is. This information allows all of us together to respond faster than ever before so that we can develop our diagnostic test and deploy it around the world. As we've seen during COVID, testing is key. 
It's our first line of defense and the foundation for how we protect people. It's about feeling safe and secure in the face of unknowns. As virus hunters, we know that new viruses aren't the only ones we need to keep an eye on. We're also looking at how pandemic viruses like HIV, hepatitis, and SARS-CoV-2, which is COVID, are evolving. And we share what we're finding so that researchers who are not in the coalition will also benefit from our work. We publish the genetic sequences of the viruses that we find in public databases so that health officials and laboratories can work together to evaluate and respond. Abbott is the only company doing this kind of virus hunting. We know that developing the right test is how we create a future with fewer unknowns and more answers. And that is how we'll confront the next viral threat we face together. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for your insights and for all the hard work that you and your team are doing. Thanks, Robert. A pandemic involves health at the broadest level. But now let's go micro, to the most personal level possible, to the trillions of microorganisms that live in your gut. This is your microbiome. And thanks to new discoveries, we're finally learning to actually trust our gut when it comes to our health. So I'm happy to introduce Dr. Hakeem Buzmundo right here to the stage. Hakeem is the head of Abbott's Nutrition Global R&D team, and he's one of the most passionate people I know when it comes to nutrition, people, and health. Hakeem. Passionate. I am passionate because I believe in a future where nutrition powers the health of your entire body. Through a new understanding of how the different parts of the body work with each other. Starting with something that, up until now, people have not recognized as being just as important as every other organ in your body. The gut microbiome. That's what you're looking at. And it's important to visualize it, because it's a hidden organ. A hundred trillion microorganisms living together as a connected ecosystem in your gut. That is 10 times more than the number of human cells in our bodies. It is a dynamic ecosystem, and you should care about your gut microbiome because it's vital to your health. The gut microbiome talks to other organs and is also influenced by our external environment. In fact, as I'm talking to you, there's constant communication between your gut and your brain, between your gut and your immune system, and between your gut and the other organs in your body. The good news is that we're working diligently to uncover how critical that communication is. But why? Because if you disrupt it, if you disrupt this communication, diseases can develop, such as hypertension, obesity, diabetes, and others. Today, you've heard how important it is to rely on technology to gather data from the heart, the brain, and other organs. Now, what if we use tech to monitor the composition and activity of our personal microbiome? We could combine this data with data gathered from other organs to entirely change the way we look at health. We would shift the paradigm from only focusing on one organ to understanding biological signals as an interconnected ecosystem. It's how we've arrived where we are today, with the first human milk oligosaccharide added to infant formula in the US. Research on HMOs, as they are called for short, is an area of science that Avot pioneered. In fact, Avot published the very first clinical trials of HMOs in infant formula. HMOs are abundant components found in breast milk, which is the gold standard for infant nutrition. And we've been able to add several HMOs to infant formula that are structurally identical to those 
found investment. It is our most significant breakthrough in infant formula in recent years. And this is just the beginning, just the beginning of our understanding of how HMOs may influence the gut microbiome and support immune functions, digestive health, and cognitive development. Best yet, nutrition is perhaps the most significant modifiable factor in promoting the formation of a healthy microbiome and a healthier you. Imagine, imagine a future where foods can be engineered to your personal microbiome to address specific needs of your, needs of your body. The secrets inside your gut can lead us there. We will lead there sooner than you think. So please take it easy on your gut while you're here in Vegas. It's working harder for you than you may realize. Thanks, Hakeem. Thank you, Rob. Love the, love the passion. And finally, we're going to move from the organic, the microbiome, to the ultra tech. We're also on the brink of using data to expand human capability and to give all of us the power to live healthier lives and reach our greatest potential. And that includes people like Ilyud Kipchoge, the first person to run a sub two hour marathon. And one gunning for his second Olympic gold medal, he needed as much data as he could get to optimize every part of his training from nutrition all the way to recovery. He needed a translator that could help him read what his body was telling him and what it needed so that he could make the impossible possible. And here's how we help him do that. My name is Helut Kipchok. Many know me as an Olympic champion. Many don't know me that I grew up in Rift Valley. I ran to school and back home every day when I was a child. I'm still running and I'm the first human being to beat the two-hour paria over 26.2 miles. What does it take to break a world record? Training, yes, but it's important also to know how your body uses glucose. It's thought as a fuel that's ready to burn when needed. When you don't have enough, then you lack endurance. I use Apot Sports Biosensor, the world's first glucose sport biosensor to track how my glucose consumption was impacting my training. My team uses these insights to evolve my trainings. The hub shows me how much glucose my body needs to achieve my goals. It's every athlete's dream. I do not have to guess what I need to succeed. The power to improve myself now rests in my own hands. Abbott is helping people to understand their body's potential and transforming the future of sport. Hello, CES. I wish I could be there right now with you. But currently, I'm training in Kaptakat, Kenya. There is new possibilities for me and for you. Abbott has a special announcement to share with you all. In the meantime, I got to run. Thanks, Iliud, and we wish him best of luck on his training. We wish he was, we wish he was here too. But he's right, we do have a special announcement uh, today, and uh, we're proud to introduce to you, for the first time, Lingo, a new category of consumer biowearable sensors that we're developing to track key signals in the body to better understand what it's telling us.
a lot of people at Abbott that have been waiting a couple years to be, able to, kind of, uh, to be able to kind of show this. So we're very excited. Lingo. It's about learning your body's unique language, a language that most of us have yet to learn how to speak. But what if we could decode the messages our body is trying to send us as a way to maintain and improve health? In other words, kind of create a, your own personal edge. Now this product, this line of products, extends the platform that we created through diabetes monitoring with, freestyle, with the Freestyle Libre sensor. You know, diabetes was our first priority, and we wanted to get it right, so we focus intently on it. And now we have the evidence and the expertise that comes from three and a half million users, and we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to translate a wide range of biometric signals, glucose, ketones, lactate, and alcohol. These are all important parts of your metabolic health. And Lingo is being designed to measure these biomarkers and provide more deeper and meaningful insights. Monitoring these biomarkers for the first time will offer unprecedented understanding of human metabolism that can improve decisions around general health, nutrition, and even athletic performance. Let me give you an example of how the Lingo family of products will be able to do uh, what they'll be able to do for you. So for those of you that are following a keto diet, you might be familiar with the idea of training your body to switch from burning sugar into burning fat, and that's called being in a state of ketosis. And there's a lot of evidence that's rolling in on the wider benefits of staying in ketosis, including higher energy levels and increased mental clarity. The Lingo Ketone Sensor is being designed to provide insights on dieting, weight loss, and real-time feedback, whether your body is in ketosis. Our glucose sensing technology that supported Iliud in achieving his seemingly impossible level of athletic performance. Understanding your glucose patterns is key to a broad range of health benefits, from weight management to better energy and sleep. The Lingo glucose sensor is going to decode those glu that glucose language for specific insights that are going to be just for you. And this new addition to our sports bio wearables will be suited for both the elite athlete and also those that are just beginning their fitness journey. A lactate biosensor will be designed to measure the buildup of lactic acid during exercise, which can be used as an indicator for athletic performance, but even more importantly, for recovery. And finally, the Lingo alcohol sensor it's going to help you make some better decisions, I can tell you that, and, and perhaps even connect to your car and help you decide just how much of Abbott's Pedialyte you need to drink after, well, whatever, whatever you did last night. It's, it's, it's amazing uh, what our bodies can tell us. And with Lingo, it's expected that you'll understand what your body really needs and what's good for you. Your body is constantly talking to you, and now it's time to listen. So we're going to be sharing more details about this incredible line of products uh, when we can, about also where and when they're going to be available. So stay tuned. You know, the fundamental promise of technology is that it allows us to live a better life. This is where health and technology come together with incredible power. For some, technology can be truly life-saving, and, and you heard stories of that today. And this is what we're fighting for, the opportunity to live our fullest lives, to give us back the joys that can be taken away from us. We can still play that instrument, uh, be there for a kid's graduation or wedding day, take that trip that we always wanted to, take our dog for a walk, or just simply wake up pain-free. The future of health and technology is a future where healthcare consumers, all of us, are less confused and more certain, we're less hesitant, more empowered, and less self-conscious, more capable and confident, our dignity intact. Cutting-edge science is paving the way for new treatments that we could barely imagine just a few years ago. Implants and biowearables are going to communicate with one another to provide a, a more personalized experience that will deliver improved health for individuals and for society. And we're closing in 
on a world where a body area network is going to connect you to your body and it's going to listen to what it's able to tell us. A world where your doctor has the data at their fingertips to make the decisions that we know will make a difference for you. And, th and thanks to worldwide networks and intelligent devices, we can imagine this future in the hardest to reach places around the world. This is a future for everyone. This is human powered health. And you can see more of this at our booth over there at the convention center. We look forward to coming back to CES, be able to show the progress that we've made toward this incredible future of human possibility that puts you at the center of your health. So in the meantime, let me wish you good health. Cheers, felicidades, and, and as we say in Brazil, ano novo, vida nova. New year, new life. Thank you.